If you're just now tuning in, welcome to the live stream. We're going to get into the Jasmine coverage. Now, there is at least one person out there that's tuning in for the first time ever. I just want to state this. Welcome to whoever you are or wherever you're from. Please, don't dismiss it. Check it out. So, here it is. This is part of my research as well. And it's from the one and only Neo Extrix. Now I can't give, I can't take credit in regards to what Neo is talking about here, but I will try to blow this up a little bit. Aha. Uh -huh. He states that it seems very likely that Jasmine will join the I own project. Now there's so many projects. Now, earlier we were talking about Project Guardian in regards to Quant. But this is Jasmine, right? And it says, for several reasons um, that they will most likely join it. First of all, Jasmine's technology targeting connected objects in Japan seems to match the project's description. I would agree with this. And NTD, NTT data is consistently referenced in regards to, in the same sentence with, with Jasmine, numerous times. But additionally, NTD data as a member of the Ethereum Alliance seems as a, like it's a close friend of Jasmine. Right. Both companies are part of the blockchain consortium while using the what Hyperledger Fabric network in Japan. It's uh, apparently a Fortune 500 company back dating to, I guess, 2020. I think that's what he means. I could be wrong about that. Notably, Harasan, let's say it the right way, Harasan has shown interest by liking some of his posts in regards to I am. And that is worth pointing out why I like it for no reason, which could suggest involvement considering the historic cooperation between Japanese industries to achieve common goals. It is plausible for these actors to, uh, excuse me, um, to converge towards collective success for the nation through this vast DX plan initiated in Japan dating all the way back to 2016. So this is only roughly two minutes. Then we'll take you to some other things about all this to make it have a little more flow and make sense. Well, let's go ahead and play this. This is two minutes. Thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in this late at night. Here we go. All right, now let's take you to the I own project site to give you an idea about this for just a brief moment. Um, let's take you over to there. And I'll try to blow this up a little bit bigger. I know I'm out of the frame, but I just want to put the emphasis on this and not my mug. So basically speaking, uh, look what it states. 
rolling out of the fifth generation. You know, um, actually, let me just shrink that down for a second. Sorry about that. So they have this whole thing of, yeah, the rollout of fifth generation of wireless systems, promote the B2B 2X model, uh, initiatives for realizing a society characterized by remote interactions. Again, back to the whole thing of Society 5.0. Um, and you have so many things that are like referenced here, right? And of course, you know, like it says, NTT, NTT data. When you go to this site, it talks about NTT R&D is envisaging, I can't pronounce that right, the arrival of new smart societies that are not yet possible with today's internet with features such as mobility as a service, mass. We always talk about that when it comes to Jasmine for extreme fail safe systems and entertainment services offering deep immersion. Let me just shrink that down a little bit so I don't have to do the back and forth thing so much. Um, to basically realize such smart societies, we will require innovation that cannot be achieved merely by extending the trajectory of current technology. We will need to realize the ultra low power consumption, high speed signal processing, and the fusion of virtual worlds that can equal or surpass reality with sophisticated prediction technologies. I'm telling you flat out, like even the conversation we had earlier in regards to quant would make sense in regards to this with, uh, you know, the whole thing of um, the global layer one in that white paper. I mean, that's massive news. I mean, even if you don't hold quant and you're watching the chopped up version of this later, take a look into that. NTT group has proposed the, excuse me, the innovative optical wireless network called ION. It's a concept to realize new smart societies. They're making a commitment to effort, committed effort to realize this concept. Now, this is why I wanted to point this out for you guys, and this is why I'm not in the frame. Bottom line is this. What is ION? I'd be asking this. I'm sure you're asking this. It's a concept for realizing new smart societies that are not yet possible with today's internet. This is what makes JASME stand out because it's part of a common goal when it comes to society 5.0 i own comprises three main tech components alphon alphotonic excuse me network that uses optical processing on not only networks but also device processing digital twin computing that enables high speed real-time interaction between things and people in cyberspace and cognitive foundation in which these are and various other ICT resources are basically efficiently managed. Now, when it comes to digital twins, this is something that's not just exclusive to Jasmine, but it is referenced with Jasmine, especially when it comes to WITS. We've done more than enough deep dives about this, so I'm not going to talk your ear off about this. But I will talk your ear off about API, especially when it comes to quant, because look at that API layer right there. Cognitive Foundation, APIs, multi orchestrator, agile allocation of ICT resources, optimization of structure. You have all these examples of the API. You have, for instance, the cloud. Remember, again, what um, Jasmine is trying to do when it comes to a Web3 cloud solution. Keep in mind the diagram at the top in regards to edge. Jasmine is always mentioned in regards to edge computing. So it just simply makes sense that, like, I think this is a real thing. And, you know, Hara can't necessarily come out with news in regards to um, verifying, you know, a particular partnership, right? But, like, you know, he's liking what um, Mr. Neo X Trix is sharing here, right? So it's just a nice little diagram. But look what it says also that you have this thing of all photonics network that incorporates new optical technologies at every level from networks to devices again think about iot devices even inside chips to enable ultra low power consumption when i think of ultra low power consumption who would be involved with that yeah mr tidashi marita sorry to burst your bubble 
Mr. You Know Who, that was saying that Jasmine's going to go to zero. Ultra high speed processing, it has not been possible, of course, until now. By allocating different wavelengths to different functions in a single optical fiber, it becomes possible to provide multiple functions that support social infrastructure without mutual interference, including information, communication functions such as internet, and sensing functions. This gives you a like an idea of the utility of motion, but how much power it's going to use. I don't know if people kind of grasp that, you know? There's a lot that's mentioned here in regards to NTT group and so on. And it's a lot to, it's just a lot to get into. I'm not going to get into all of this, but one thing I will mention is this right here. And that is an innovative optical and wireless network. It's called ION concept and research are developing and moving forward on this roadmap. This started back in 2021 NTT will establish reference models for key ION constitute technologies that's going to promote these to the ION global forum. And they're trying to accelerate examinations, develop specifications, specifically for technical directions that have been defined in the ION global forum white paper. It's a full stack communication acceleration data centric communication and commuting, computing scaling across device edge center cloud and sustainable growth with energy efficiency. R&D projects are being advanced in accordance with these themes. Guys, I'm just going to be honest with you. Everything about this, you know, Neil X Trix is 100% right. This spells out Jasmine without even confirming a partnership. Okay. A little bit more about this, just to spell it out for you, just in case you're like, nah, you know, like the guy in Crocodile Dundee too. Nah, needs garlic, right? Look at this. I own Global Forum Inc. established together with Intel Corporation, the United States of America, and Sony Corporation of Japan in January 2020 released a white paper describing four technical directions in April 2020. And they have since commenced technological evaluations of these directions. Back in September 10th, 2020, ION Global Forum, which is operated by ION Global Forum Inc., had 29 member companies including three founders, 26 other companies from Japan and overseas. The first meeting of its members of this forum was held in a form of an online conference in September. The meeting served as an opportunity for four member companies to come around the world to engage with other, with each other and discuss use cases and technologies and working groups. Going forward, NTT will continue to work with partners from various industries and re- regions with the aim of quickly making the I own concept a reality. How about making Jasmine with the personal data locker, that utility, a reality? I will come back into the frame in regards to this. So I think this is all a big deal. And the reason why I want to state is, is more than a big deal is because everything that we've been researching about Jasmine is all referenced here. You know, a lot of times there's going to be partnerships that they can come out and mention, and there's going to be ones that they can't do to NDAs. And while a lot of us are like, I don't understand all this, why some can be mentioned and why some can't understand this doesn't necessarily matter because if you understand the bigger picture, all you need is just the utility to be in motion. And there's a lot of times where even with the quant examples that quant works in the background to create not just interoperability, but the standards, the policies, the working groups, all coming together to achieve one basic goal. And it's not just mass adoption, but it's basically, especially when it comes to Jasmine, the goal of Society 5.0. All those examples that we gave you from ION also show that plain as day. So what about a little bit more in regards to ION and Jasmine? Could it actually happen, happen I should say? And is it happening as we speak? That's a great question. I decided to jump more into this. And if anything, try to give you some notes. Just putting some of the branding back on. So in my notes, um, I decided to look more into this. And I said to myself, you know, I'm trying to put things into layman's terms and, and basically break things down from your point of view. Okay. You know, and I said to myself, what would be the significance of the ION project and, of course, a Jasmine Alliance? Great question. 
You know, I own project, like we know, is a Japanese government initiative to develop a first generation network that will provide ultra high speed, low latency and secure connectivity. The project, of course, aims to create a network that can support a wide range of applications. And again, I want you to think about this for a second, because there is not enough information that's being shared in regards to the Jasmine Smart Super Wallet at this time. But we can research more things that could really very well be connected to the Jasmine. I'm just going to go ahead and call it. I'm with Neo X Tricks. I think I own project as part of this. So for one, I own with this wide range of applications can support a lot of these things that Jasmine is trying to do. And this does include autonomous vehicles. Now we understand you're going to have sensors on many things, not just vehicles, but you, you name it, drones, all sorts of things. We talk about, you know, joking around the rice crop consortium. Those drones are going to survey the farmland and so on. They're going to do a lot more than just that. You know, the, the smart cities, you name it kick it back to the utility of the personal data locker and so on and you understand how we have agriculture we have uh, so many things in regards to boosting the economy of japan and that is utility in motion over and over and over again i cannot think of a project that could be using as much utility when it comes to IOT than Jasmine. Now, there's some other ones, don't get me wrong. Like I, I own, for instance, IOTA. People are pointing out, you know, there's IOTEX. There's other ones, don't get me wrong. But what I love about Jasmine is what they're looking to accomplish for the future. And if anything, what about the near future? You know? So a little bit more I want to get into this because it's not just autonomous vehicles. It's also AI, artificial intelligence. And of course, ION will contribute, obviously, to the whole thing of the Internet of Things. Now, when it comes to Jasmine, okay, you know, you got to keep in mind this alliance could bring a group of Japanese companies, you know, specifically these two, but other ones to work together to have it all come together. Why? Because of Society 5.0, smart cities, and so on. But bottom line is to help develop and promote not just Jasmine, but it works hand in hand, even the ION project. That's good because it can't be something that's just this benefits Jasmine, but doesn't benefit ION. It will benefit ION. So the alliance would include companies such as, for instance, listen to this, guys, NTT, NEC, Fujitsu, even Panasonic, which we do know as this, uh, their particular subsidiary does have a partnership with Jasmine. So there is that. And I guess you can even say Fujitsu and some of the other ones. Now, in regards back to the whole thing of ION, you got to keep in mind ION project in Jasmine Alliance, when it comes verifiable, if you want it, or you know, when it becomes verified, it is going to be more than significant because they have the potential to revolutionize the way we not only live, but the way we work, the way we even play or kids play, all that stuff would be monitored. Some of us are like, man, monitoring our kids. Shoot, come on, man. You already monitor your kids as we speak, your babies. How do you do it as we speak? Baby monitor, right? Who doesn't have a baby monitor? Some people don't, some people do. But whatever the case, how we take that to the next level? Well, that's a good example. Yeah, monitor how you, they even play. That's data. And that data will be used to monitor like behaviors and maybe good habits, bad habits, uh, all sorts of things. That's valuable data. It's valuable to somebody. But your key takeaway should be how much is that data going to be worth? And if anything, that accesses the utility of a personal data logger. That's not a bad thing. The new network could enable new forms of communication, of course, of in collaboration. True. And it could also lead to the development of new products and services that we can't even imagine today. Again, like I've always mentioned, you may have a difference in opinion when it comes to the culture of Jasmine, but if you understand the bigger picture of it's not that East meets West, it's just simply understanding that there's a difference in the culture and their focus is a unification towards a common goal. How can we use that as an example? 
back to the whole thing I was talking about before. Hotels. How many hotels do you see owned by a guy by like, you know, and I don't mean this in a bad way, by a guy by the name of like Mr. Patel. I state this because he's worked for Best Western years ago. I talked to probably 75 out of 100 um, hotel owners that had that name, Mr. Patel. But everybody that works with Mr. Patel, for instance, <clears throat> was part of the family business towards a common goal. Restaurants. You know, I love uh, uh, pho, it's called. You know, some of you guys call it pho. Vietnamese beef noodle soup. Have you ever noticed? It's a family-owned business, and it's a big family. But they all are bought into the common goal because they want to thrive in regards to that business. What about Japan th thriving when it comes to Society 5.0? Just because you don't see it working here in the United States doesn't mean it won't work for other places in the world. Now, a little bit more about this. There is basically three key components in regards to the benefits of the ION project and if anything how it would work with jasmine i want you to hear this for a brief moment there will there will for one be ultra high speed connectivity like we mentioned before but how so well ION project aims to provide data speeds of up to listen to this guys this sounds nuts you know you can look more into it on the on that site if you want to nerd it out but data speeds up to 100 terabits per second. That sounds just insane, right? This is significantly faster, of course, the current network speeds. Yeah, no kidding. You know, anybody's had a piece of crap 28.8K modem like myself back in 1998 or a 56K, right, which is 5.6K per second. Then you go from that to what? Megabytes. Then you go from megabytes to meg, uh, sorry, yeah, megabytes, and then from there, you would go to gigabytes, right? A lot of us have gig Ethernet, but terabits per second? Wow. Talk about Web3. That's Web3. All right. So in regards to all this, this is going to make things significantly faster for current network speeds, and this is crucial. Jasmine, it's in their best interest to partner up with ION if they haven't done so already. I'm, a, I'm literally thinking that they have. Because you want to see scalability. Now, in the, the white paper, Jasmine is trying to do this. But if you could partner up with enablers, then this means you can achieve scalability beyond the bounds of your, of your own particular blockchain. You've got to keep in mind that with the pairings of what they're looking to do with the Japanese yen denominated stable coins paired up with, for instance, with uh, you know, like ja Jasmine with the native token and so on. Um, you want to see instances where we never have scalability issues. And I think obviously with ION, you wouldn't have that problem. Um, but basically speaking, yes, this is significantly faster. Um, typically like, you know, for you and I, um, I, I'm not in the gig ethernet because I, you know, for me, it's just, it's just me here. I don't need gig ethernet. Like I'm actually cool with, you know, like a 25, you know, uh, megabyte line. Uh, because I don't do as much gaming as I used to. But for a lot of people, you are using a gig Ethernet line. But again, 100 terabits compared to that, hey, we have solved the whole problem of the what ifs in regards to data speed. So boom, checked. All right, what about the two other things we're talking about? So for one, there will be low latency. ION Project basically aims to reduce the latency as low as one millisecond. Cool. This is important for various reasons, but for applications, you don't want a situation in which, you know, we're going to be using the Jasmine smart wallet on our phone, right? Or whatever the case be, and you click on it and it's a leggy application. People aren't going to have it. They're going to be like, this thing is leggy. I don't like it. I'm not going to use it. That kills it. All the work that they've done for all these years, be thrown out the window. You can't have that. So it makes sense for them to pair up, or I should say pair up, partner up with ION. I, I'm totally, Neo, I'm sure you're going to watch this at some point. Shout out to you, man. You get it. And the reason why you get it is because you see how this simply makes sense from beginning to end, this whole thing with ION Project. And I know that there's other big news that came out. I wanted to cover this because this deserves our attention as well. So how is this also important in regards to low latency? Well, for many reasons that we just pointed out, but it's important for applications, like we mentioned, the, the super wall and so on, um, especially in the future when it comes to, you know, a, a smart 
phone, a, a smart blockchain phone. Applications need to require the whole thing of real-time communication. Um, autonomous vehicles, perfect example. Virtual reality. I mean, if you're a gamer, do you want leg? No, not at all. If you like, like, forget that, right? You don't want no leg. All right. Key point number three. Actually, it should be the head of the other one. You have to have security before you have utility, right? Security should be more important than just speed. But the two come hand in hand. So the ION project aims to create a network, according to the notes, that is highly secure and resistant to, of course, cyber attacks. Yeah, that is worth pointing out. This is important for applications that involve, of course, sensitive data. Yeah, it, yeah, like the personal data locker, maybe? <laughs> right. Such as also financial transactions, hence JASME, with what they're trying to do for cross-board payments, entering into finance democracy. It simply makes sense that, you know what? If we're going to take the whole thing of finance democracy serious, then I own probably would be the way to go with that. Right. There's obviously other examples we get that we've given, but you know, it's like Jasmine doesn't have to just pick one, but they can have multiple ones. Having more than one solution provides you a safety net just in case something was to like go down. You want multiple ones because that's a good thing. You could piggyback off of other ones, right? You don't want to, as the saying goes, put all your eggs in one basket because what happens to that basket? What if something bad happens? So there's more to it than just financial. It's even medical. Remember the whole thing of being partnered up with the care project in regards to what they're trying to solve for medical? Yeah, I know even hits that as well. Cool stuff. Now, wrapping things up, what about the whole thing in regards to a little bit more with Jasmine with this, right? Jasmine itself plays a vital role in regards to all this because, for one, the development and promotion of the ION project. Now, this alliance, again, we don't know for 100% sure if it's already there, but to me it seems like it is. It will bring together the expertise of a wide range of companies to help ensure that the project, of course, is, success is successful. You know, when we give examples of Ripple's XRP, Will Fix, for instance, gave an example in his videos if you subscribe to him he was talking about you know all of these new companies that are now new you know newly partners of ripple they just kind of hopped on board they didn't hop on board so much of hey you know we believe in xrp but they hopped on board because of what ripple gives them as far as a new network I own provides Jasmine a whole new network that they never had access to. That's awesome. So for one, while you know it, it's important to point out all these things, you got to keep in mind that the two can work together and benefit each other. The alliance or future alliance, I should say, or current alliance, would bring together expertise a wide of a wide range of companies to ensure that the project, of course, is successful. Sorry, that's my notes. I'm reading that again. But the Alliance is also working to raise awareness of the project to create a market for ION-based products and, of course, services. And all of those products and all of those services, they're not only tied into medical, but, you know, finance democracy, obviously, Internet of Things. That creates utility in motion because it enables the personal data locker to be connected to all that. How cool is that? In conclusion, the IM project and even Jasmine with this particular current or future alliance, which of course are still in their early stages, true, would bring the potential, and I want you to pay attention to this, to make a significant impact, of course, on not only Society 5.0, but even the world. Hear me out on this. The reason being is that the new network would enable new forms of communication and collaboration but it could also lead to the development of new products and services that we can't even fathom today. I mean, we talk about the future. I mean, it, it opens up endless possibilities of things that are just simply not even talked about. How so? Think about it, guys. Don't overthink it. The progression of AI. 
So I want you guys to understand that even though this is news that kind of flew under the radar, it's kind of a what if, I don't think it's so much of a what if. I own in Jasmine. I'm just going to go ahead and call it right now. I think that's a real thing. Thank <laughs> you.